Aloha and Namaste. My name is Jonathan Barlow Gee, and I'm a metaphysician. A large part of what this entails is scholarly research culminating in applying variable labels to geometric lattice diagrams with the intention of finding axiomatic relationships between these variables. Some would call this doing Kabbalah. To me, it is simply symbology. Consider this design, called an apocalypse star, based on a diagram in the work Dimensions of Paradise by number theorist John Frederick Carden Michel, 1933-2009. Onto it have been affixed all 22 attributes of Hakabala's mystical paths of wisdom, corresponding also to the Tarot trumps, that include the 12 signs of the zodiac round, the seven classical planets of antiquity, and the three alchemical phases of matter. To better understand why these 22 variable labels are each placed in the location they are on this diagram. We may also look at it color-coded. Here we see that the twelve astrological signs of the zodiac round apply upon the seven lengths of blue lines, the skip one heptagram, and four out of the seven red lines, the skip two heptagram, the other three being devoted to the alchemical elements. Surrounding these, in green, are the seven classical planets of antiquity. The result of this arrangement is the placement of the equivalent symbols onto the so-called Apocalypse Star, as we see here. The labels of the twelve astrological signs of the zodiac round we see are doubled, so that there are a total of twenty-four zodiac signs, six alchemical glyphs, and the seven classical planets of antiquity, labeled here. We have now seen how the seven-pointed star, or heptagram, can serve as a lattice onto which may be placed, at least, the twenty-two symbols of Hakabala's mystic paths, and thus how this apocalypse star may serve as a truncated form of Hakabala's tree of life model. So now that we understand this basic tool of metaphysics, let's try to apply it to some other, perhaps more well-known, symbols of so-called sacred geometry. From these three most essential shapes in 2D, Euclidean plane space, the circle, the triangle, and the square, can be extrapolated their fourth spatial dimensional counterparts in the forms of the torus, the stelloctahedron, and the tesseract. Let us look at these forms, but especially at their symbols, the shadows they cast into the collective subconscious, in this case as the flower of life, the Sri Yantra, and Metatron's cube. The first of these such forms we can deal with is also the most complex, but because it is the basis for much of Hakabalah, I have already addressed it in great detail elsewhere and will not belabor the point here but to say a tesseract is a fourth spatial dimensional object and as such may exist in multiple different places in three space and at multiple different times and still be unified as a single hyperspatial object. As such, the tesseract is a metaphor or archetype of sacred geometry expressing the notion of time. In modern New Age literature there are equivalencies drawn between Metatron, Enoch, and Thoth or Tahuti, the Egyptian god of the moon who also reigned over time as the record keeper of all the days lived by each newly dead soul to be weighed. Now, the next simpler shape we may consider the form of is the hypertetrahedron, or stelloctahedron, whose symbolic shadow is cast as the Sri Yantra, 
an ancient Vedic design based on an even more ancient sacred geometry. The Sri Yantra is in the Orient much alike what the Tree of Life lattice diagram of Kabbalah is for the Occident. First, we should note in studying the symbolic shadow of the Sri Yantra, cast down by the fourth dimensional form of the twin conjoined tetrahedra, derives originally from the two dimensional shape of the simple triangle or trigram. By repeatedly recombining this shape with itself, we can derive more archetypal sacred geometries in two space, and each of these will have its own symbol set attributed to it. The Sri Yantra provides lesser and greater sizes of triangles interior to its overall design. Nine primary triangles comprise the structure carving out 43 smaller triangles within them, and these can all be organized according to a series of concentric levels and depicted three-dimensionally as Mount Maru. The Sri Yantra is central to the Sri Vidya system of Hindu Tantra, which is based on the Hindu philosophy of Shaktiism, or belief in the goddess Adi Parashakti, whose name means first supreme power, and whom rules as the primordial cosmic energy from the source of all else. Central to the Sri Yantra is the Bindu, or power point, literally droplet in Sanskrit, considered the point at which creation begins and may become unity. The Bindu is also described as the sacred symbol of the cosmos in its unmanifested state. Now let us turn our attention from ancient oriental metaphysics to the origin for the concept of a toroidal vortex coil. The simplest shape of the three given to start with is the circle, its four-dimensional counterpart, the torus, and the shadowed symbol cast out by this form is the so-called flower of life depiction of modern sacred geometry. Just as the 4D torus was the basis for the so-called vortex coil, so too was the flower of life the symbol by which ancient people referred to the torus. The flower of life model contains six circles intersecting at a point with the seventh circle centered on that intersection, producing a design with six-fold dihedral symmetry composed from six intersecting vesica Pisces lenses. The pattern figure can be drawn with pen and compass by creating seven interlinking circles of the same diameter, touching the previous circle's center. The second circle is centered at any point on the first circle. All following circles are centered on the intersection of two other circles. The triangular lattice form, with circle radii equal to their separation, is called a seven overlapping circles grid. The name Flower of Life is modern associated with the New Age movement, and commonly attributed to specifically Dronvalo Melchizedek in his book The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, 1999. The six-petal rosette, central to the design, is also known as the Son of the Alps, and has been used as the emblem of Padanian nationalism in northern Italy, since the 1990s. Martha Bartfield describes the construction. This design consists of circles having a one unit radius with each point of intersection serving as a new center. The design can be expanded ad infinitum depending upon the number of times the odd numbered points are marked off. 
In quilting, the pattern has been called diamond or triangle wedding ring to distinguish it from the traditional square tiling pattern. The pattern also underlies one type of giri pattern, a decorative Islamic geometric art form used in architecture and handicraft objects consisting of angled lines that form an interlacing strap pattern. Patterns of seven overlapping circles appear in historical artifacts from the 7th century BC onwards. They become a frequently used ornament in the Roman Empire period and survive into medieval artistic traditions both in Islamic art, Giri architectures and decorations, and in Gothic art, cathedral and stained glass motif designs. Similar patterns were sometimes used in England as apotropaic marks to keep witches from entering buildings. The pattern is also to be found in the Hindu temple at Prabhanan in Java. Although the drawings are not mentioned in the extensive listings of graffiti at the temple compiled by Margaret Murray in 1904, five patterns of 19 overlapping circles appear on the granite columns at the Temple of Osiris in Abydos, Egypt, and a further five on a column opposite the building, all drawn in red ochre. The oldest now known occurrence of the overlapping circles pattern is dated to 645 BC and found on the threshold of the palace of Assyrian king Asher Bani Apli, 668 to 627 BC, in Dur Surukin, the fortress of Sargon, present day Khorsabad. The symbol, carved into a house's ceiling beam, was supposed to protect the house from lightning strikes. In this Cipro archaic 1, 8th to 7th centuries BC cup from Idalion, Cyprus, the pattern does not have a hexagonal outline. The carvings on the cup also depict mythological scenes, a sphinx frieze, and the representation of a king vanquishing his enemies. In this mosaic from Ephesus, an ancient Greek city on the coast of Ionia, in present-day Izmir province, Turkey. We find an example dating from sometime between the city's founding in the 10th century BC until around the time of its sacking by the Goths in 263 AD. The design becomes more widespread in the early centuries of the Common Era and was a frequently used ornament in the Roman Empire period. Herod the Great, 73 B.C. until 4 B.C., built a palace within the fortress of Herodium, about 12 kilometers south of Jerusalem. This was most likely where Herod lived. He decorated his rooms with mosaic floors and elaborate frescoes. In the trepidarium of the Roman bathhouse at Herod's palace, we find this mosaic of the Flower of Life Seven Circle. Dating from around this same period, the Talpia tomb is a rock-cut tomb discovered in 1980 AD in the East Talpia neighborhood, five kilometers, around three miles, south of the old city in East Jerusalem. The tomb contained ten ossuaries, six inscribed with epigraphs, including one interpreted as Yeshua bar Yohesef, Joshua, son of Joseph. Several of these bear flower of life pattern sacred geometrical engravings. The other epigraphs read, 
Yose, a diminutive of Joseph. Maria, written in Aramaic script, a Latin form of the Hebrew name Miriam, Mary. Matia, Hebrew for Matthew. Miriamini e Mara, Greek for Mary known as the Master. The similar name, Mariamne, is found in the Acts of Philip. Lastly, Yehuda bar Yeshua, possibly Aramaic for Judah, son of Jesus. Although likely attributable to this visual representation of the Borromean rings used as an emblem of Lorenzo de' Medici in San Pancrazio, Florence, Leonardo da Vinci recorded observations about this geometric pattern as well. Da Vinci, in his Codex Atlanticus, folio 307R to 309V, as well as in 459R, dated 1478 to 1519 AD, explicitly discussed the mathematical proportions of the design. While providing a geometric puzzle as a pastime may have caught the attention of the maestro momentarily, this model seems to have proved of little practical use in spite of Leonardo's attempts to decipher and decrypt it. So this shape declined into the dustbin of history where it languished for the next 600 years or so until now. Using the method of Marco Roden and Randy Powell in arranging coils into a torus by counting the number of gaps between them, I have formulated what I hope will serve as the basis for further consideration to come on the subjects of induction patterns, vortex math, and implosion theories. Note that because the seventh circle contains the rest, the central six circles overlap to leave a total of 36 gaps. But even more significantly than as an electrical engineering schematic for a basic wire coiling design, the toroid form can be geometrically expanded in abstract to encompass the entirety of all possible motions for direction, the three vectors of the past being blue shifted and the three vectors of the future red shifted. Thus, in a sense, a simple toroid may be thought of as containing not only our own cosmos, but also its three most likely futures and its three definite pasts. A flat circle expanded becomes a 3D sphere. A sphere turned inside out becomes a 4D toroid. The combination of the 4D toroid and the 3D sphere is a 5D hypersphere. If a 4D toroid can expand indefinitely to encompass the whole of our cosmos and all its possible pasts and potential futures, then a 5D hypersphere may be thought of as describing the conditions of the Big Bang or those at the gravitational singularity in the core of a black hole and as being adjacent to our own cosmos in its timelines. The aura of a living person has evolved to mimic these cosmic scale patterns as well. The averaged pattern of all people's electromagnetic field lines forms the torus over time. So within us each illuminates forth a five-dimensional primary clear light as motivating force for this EM field. This single emanation of 5D hyperspatial or tachyonic radiation 
splits itself prismatically into the five chakras along the spine and two in our brain. Or, in short, the primary clear light splits apart into the seven vortexes of the chakras, like a beam of white light being split by a prism into the seven color visible spectrum. Namaste and Aloha.